All right, you guys, hello. I'm gonna do a video um, on cork. And I've been getting a lot of requests and people asking about my experience with cork tile. And so I figured I'd make a video on it. And so here we are. Um, I first wanna show you some uh, pieces that I did um, a couple years ago. This is one I did two years ago. This is on cork tile, oil pastel. This one does have um, a fixative on it and also has a laminate on it. Um, so it's a little glossy, if you can tell for that in the video. Um, but this is cork tile, um, perfect 12 inches squared, and maybe about, you know, like a quarter of an inch thick. Um, I'll show you the back side of it. So it's uh, made by this company, Robinson, from Portugal. I um, actually did a Google search, and um, I think I can get more of these just from a different company. I have a feeling this is just a wall tile or maybe a floor tile. Um, this side here is not laminated. This is just cork, but the other side was laminated, and so that was the side that I chose to um, create this painting on. But this one is two years old, um, and it's got a lot of fixative on it. I think I put about seven layers of fixative on it, and then I put some... Um, acrylic laminate over it so it's I mean it's super protected and a very solid piece so this is one I did a few weeks ago um, this is not on gesso so I just went directly right on the cork material right here didn't put any gesso down and just went right in with the oil pastel right on top of that cork and I was able to get a ton of layers on it and then I had to uh, then seal it with fixative and uh, for the cork, I'm using this Centelier, uh Final Fixative. And I have to say, guys, um, I think this is the best fixative you can get for oil pastels. I, I think it's actually formulated for oil pastels. And I've been experimenting a lot with this lately. Um, and over the last year or so, since my last fixative video, I've kind of changed my opinion and I'm kind of back to this stuff, but I'm going to make a new video on that alone. I know fixative is a big issue and there's a lot of confusing information on it. And, um, and I did have a change in opinion, um, from my last video. So I want to share that with you. I want to share my experience. That's going to be a separate video, but anyway, what I'm trying to say here is I put about seven layers of this stuff on this piece in very light passes to about seven layers. And from those seven layers, I was able to get really solid, thorough protection on it. Um, you can see the cork is pretty stable. You can, you can still bend it, but it's very stable. It's very, um, it's not gonna fall apart on me. It's, I can run my hands across, getting a little bit up here from the um, thick foliage. But other than that, it's pretty solid. Um, especially down in this part of the painting where it's just, it's totally protected. Some parts where it's real heavy on the Sen uh, Lier oil pastel, there's still a little bit of uh, color coming up. I could probably go with some more layers and probably get a little bit more coverage on it. But honestly, I've just been laying this out with stuff on it and it's been holding up just fine. I did um, about a month ago. Um, this one's got a lot of texture up here, a lot of layers up here in the leaves. And the trees um, and again probably about seven six or seven layers of very light fixative passes going over it um, so what I do is I'll, I'll put a light spray of fixative you know over it um, lay it flat let it sit for a good 10 minutes like I just let it sit don't deal with anything it for 10 minutes and then after 10 minutes I'll I'll do another light pass let it sit for 10 minutes and I will do six or seven passes to eventually you get enough fixative stacked up where it becomes, where it protects the work really good. All right, so there's that one. And again, this is a lot of texture up here and I'm still able to get um, really good coverage. I'm not getting any color up on this one at all. So I got actually better coverage on this one um, than this one down here. Um, so there's that one. And here's one that I did um, a couple weeks ago. Now, this one is on the um, same cork tile, but I didn't put any fixative on it. So it's just oil pastel. There's no spray fixative on it. You can see a grain. I don't know you guys can probably see that in the video here, but there's definitely a grain going across. That's the grain with the, oil, with the cork. And uh, I figured I could cover that grain with layers of oil pastel, but 
Um, it's just too strong and it just came through. Again, this has no fixative on it and it's just been staying out. Um, so it's pretty fragile. I can, I can definitely um, manipulate this with my fingers. I could rub color off if I want to. Right now I'm just coloring. You can see color is coming up here um, just from rubbing it. So I do need to spray a fixative on it, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like without fixative. Again, this side was a laminate side. And so I chose the the cork side where there's just it's just bare cork, no laminate, and uh, it came out pretty well. Didn't use any gesso on this one. Okay, so those are the few that I have down here. Here's one um, that I just did last week or so, and I was going to make a video on this, but decided to scrap the video. It didn't really turn out all that well. So, um, but this is a, a from a cork tile that I got off Amazon. So you can go on Amazon, you can just get cork tile. I think you can get four for like 12 or $13. And it comes, since cork tile comes, it's really kind of flimsy, kind of cheap actually. Um, way different than these uh, Robinson cork from Portugal. Um, this is just, I'm not going to use this again for, for my work. It's just too unstable for me. Um, I need a little bit more firmer surface. I, also, it was very spongy. Um, this cork from Amazon is just very spongy. I could really press into it. And I didn't really like that. Um, but I did create a piece out of it. I created this one. Um, and I don't know if you guys can tell, but just looking at the two different types of cork, there's definitely better color and coverage on this one compared to this one. And they have about the same amount of layers. Um, this this cork from Amazon just just didn't hold up all that well in my opinion even though I was able to get a decent image out of it um, and there's no fixative on this and if you come up close here you can definitely see the uh, texture of this cork um, so it was fun to, to, to experiment with but uh, I'm definitely not going to do it again from Amazon I'm gonna have to get my cork tile from that Portugal company hopefully I'll be able to find it but I just wanted to show you there's Differences in cork material. It's not all cork tiles are the same. There's definitely a difference. Um, this one by uh, Robinson um, was my favorite. It's just really nice and sturdy, very firm. Feels more like a board, um, and it's this uh, company called Robinson or Robinson from Portugal. Um, and I think they're wall tiles or floor tiles, but typically one side is laminated and then the other side is just bare cork material. And that is the side that I'm using the oil pastel on. All right. All right. So here it is. That's just a really pretty photo. I mean, the photo itself is a work of art, but this is a, this is not my photo. This is a copyright free, uh, reference photo that I have permission to use. Um, and so I'm just going to go ahead and, and use it for this uh, demonstration. But we have this nice row that kind of comes in at an angle here and kind of goes down and kind of a kind of a bumpy little windy little country dirt road here. And you see it just fades off into nothing, kind of like in this fog back in here. And of course, it's really colorful. Um, but also what I'm noticing is I'm noticing the way the land um, slopes. So you can definitely see a slope right here. You know, so it kind of slopes down and over here it slopes in towards the road and that is consistent all the way down. Um, and so just keep that in mind when I'm when I go to the tile here to 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 keep that in mind when I do that. My darkest area is obviously right up here in the front. And of course, the tree and there's some dark areas um, back here on the left side here. So darkest value here, lightest value there. Um, and we've got these uh, kind of a foggy autumn fall day. <clears throat> All right, so this will be fun. Obviously, we're looking at a landscape format. We're going to be painting on a squared format. So that's going to be interesting. Um, but it'll work out. Just going to have to just switch things around a little bit. All right, so let's pull some colors off. I'm just going to go real basic here. Here's my set of oil pastels. Um, I have... Um, Gotta have four or five different brands down here. I have the Secure Crepaz Expressionist, which is all right here. 
and a couple of big sun sticks. Got the white, a blue, and then my um, just uh, transparent, uh, my blending stick there. And then we have a mix of uh, Moon Geos and uh, Sens and some Van Goghs and some Neo Pastels all in the rest of my set here, including over here. All right, and I just have those really mixed up and I just sort them by color. Um, the only exception is I keep my Cray Paws Expressionist separate from all the other ones because these are very different as far as their consistency goes um, with the oil and wax, so I kind of keep them separate. But let's start off with the Cray Paws. I'm gonna go ahead and pull off some colors. Go with the ochre <clears throat> and brown. I think this is the same stick, just broken half there. Um, I don't have a gray, I really want a gray. So I'm gonna have to go over here and use this gray right here. And this is a, um, just a, like a dark gray. I think it's a Mungio, Mungio Gallery. You guys um, familiar with uh, brands. This brand, Mungio Gallery Oil Pastel. Mungio Artist Soft Oil Pastel. Um, I think they're from Korea, made in Korea, yep really like this um, brand, it's just hard for me to get because I can't buy them local and I have to get them online and sometimes I can't get the colors that I need. So that's why I've been transitioning over to the Van Goghs. And uh, here's a Van Gogh. Now the Van Goghs are um, local. I can get them at my art store so I don't have to buy them online, which I really like. Um, Royal Talons Van Gogh. What I find with the Van Goghs and the, um, the Mungios is they're very similar in size and feel and the consistency of oil and wax is, is the same. Very, very close. And so I find them interchangeable. That's why I've kind of switched over. Anyway, I know this will be a little bit extra information you guys maybe didn't want to hear, but... All right, let's get stay on top of here. So I got a gray, I got a brown, I got an ochre. And I'm also gonna pull off one of these uh, kind of green grays here. And then uh, let's look at that picture again. All right, so we definitely have a gray, a really light gray as far as the sky goes. But it's probably gonna be one of these here. Maybe this one. Let's use the one that's kind of been used. All right, and I'm just gonna grab the brown and see if we can get some brown on the brown. Brown on brown cork, see if that'll even show up. Probably not. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at where I'm gonna put this road. <clears throat> so where on here am I gonna indicate that road? So it's gonna be down in this corner. And so that brown doesn't even hardly show up. So let's go to a gray. This will come out. There we go. All right, and so the road just kind of does something like, like this. It kind of just meanders down, kind of back in this section of the painting. It just kind of disappears, but there's one side of it. And then um, the other side just kind of follow along and then it's like that maybe something like that <clears throat> okay and we can adjust that but that's just roughly where I'm gonna put it here um, I can always switch it but somewhere in there it's gonna end okay so let's go ahead and cover that in with the gray and notice the oil pastel, I'm gonna to try to get close here so you guys can see. It really is really easy to just draw on it. Um, you can see the texture here with the grain and, and the, the cork. But just go ahead and fill that in with some gray. And this is a, um, this is a dark gray, as I've said before. I think I told you guys that. I wanna keep repeating myself, actually, yeah, let's go ahead and finish it. I'm going to get a piece of paper over here, and so we'll test colors before we put them down. <clears throat> okay, so we're just going to take this gray. 
and um, color in this road. Now I'm gonna do a lot of layers. I'm just starting off with a gray. I usually like to start off with a gray or a brown, just kind of a neutral color that's gonna be easy to um, go back over with. Of course, when I get down to here, it's very hard to draw hitting my easel here, so I tend to um, flip it so I have a free edge over here. So this cork tile has got a nice firm feel like board does, which I like. Um, that stuff from Amazon was very spongy, so I could press into it. I didn't really enjoy that. Um, I didn't really like that all that well. I like more of a hard surface. All right. So you can see the cork is still very, um, very visible there underneath that gray. I can take my thumb here and I can kind of rub this around a little bit. <clears throat> A little bit of movement, but not too much. Kind of stays where you put it. All right. That's going to be a road. All right, so let's get in the kind of the rest of this uh, landscape here on the side. So I need to kind of switch to a dark, kind of a dark brown. Um, question is, which brown do I want to use? So I'm going to have to use the rest of this one here. This is a dark brown. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna use this dark brown to try to get the sides of the road here. I'll just show you, I got a piece of paper up here so we can actually look at the color before I put it on the cork. So you can actually see what it is. There you very see dark brown. This is a Neo Pastel. I can just tell by the way it feels in my hand. It's uh, got a lot more oil in it. All right, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to get this part of the land, trying to figure out where this would be in relation to the road here. And I'm about right here. <clears throat> All right, and that just kind of slopes right down like that. All right, and so I'm going to take the dark. Now you can see it on the cork. You can see the darkness of it. I just needed something darker than the cork, the brown cork. All right, I'm going to take that right into the road. Okay, I've got to flip it here because it gets hard to uh, draw at the edge there. I will have to say that the cork does eat up the oil pastel. Um, I've already got a nice flat edge here because I'm just rubbing that right off on the cork. Uh, so the texture of the cork does pick up a lot of that color, and so it does go through the oil pastel faster than say, you know, paper would, right? But surprisingly, the cork can take a lot of layers too. All right, so there's that side. And uh, let's go ahead and use this same, actually, you know what? I'm gonna go switch to a, uh, a Prussian blue. All right, you know that Prussian blue, this is a Mungio gallery, Prussian blue, there's the color there. Okay. And I'm going to take this and we're going to do this side with the Prussian blue. So probably you're going to use a little bit of that brown too. <clears throat> I'm trying to be mindful of keeping the camera still. I tend to move around a lot. So I know that can be really distracting. And so um, I'm trying to keep it still as much as I can remember to do that. All right, and I'm just taking this blue and I'm just rubbing it in here on the sides of this, on this side of the country road here. Okay, because we're gonna go, we're gonna get a lot of layers, but this is gonna be my base layer. I'm gonna use this blue here, down in here. I like the Prussian blue for a number of factors. It's just a nice deep blue color to work with. Um, I like it because um, it's a good color for distant darks and the dark, underneath foliage of trees and mountains and things like that. All right, so we're gonna take that blue right into there. Come back in with this dark brown. Go over the top of that a little bit. <clears throat> Got my little heater on in the studio because um, 
the winter months here, it gets cold in the studio. I don't have the same installation like the rest of the house does, so um, I have a little heater going. You might hear that. I also have a little music in the back, but I turned it down. I don't want I don't want Amazon to not allow me to upload this, so. <clears throat> okay. So I'm just kind of overlaying the brown and the blue. I'm gonna kind of keep going up with the brown and the blue up into the foliage. So so back in here. You know, we got some dark values back in here, but we're just gonna start off with the blue. All right. Now you can blend, I can blend with my fingers and I can smear it around a little bit and get a little bit better coverage uh, over the cork by doing this. Um, <clears throat> it just, can take so many layers I can just keep adding this and then keep trying to move it around um, it's very different than paper and anything else I've ever used um, I thought about just working on cork 100% for a little while and just get more experience with it but you know of the seven or eight I've done already um, every time I've used it I, I just like it more and more um, it's not going to replace paper for me, especially won't, it won't replace pastel mat. There's certain things that, um, certain pieces that I just like pastel mat for, particularly like portraiture. I, I just like the details I can get with pastel mat. Where this gives me a, um, the cork gives me a much more textured, impressionistic feel. So good for landscapes, you know? nature, stuff like that. I'm just taking my thumb here and uh, getting really dirty. I guess most of it's ending up on my fingers, looks like. And I'm trying to just cover this cork a little bit so we don't see so much of the cork. Um, just try to cover that up, smear that around a little bit. <clears throat> smear this around. Now, this has got a lot more of the brown on this side of it. All right, and I'm gonna clean my fingers. There's a lot of uh, a lot of oil pastel just caked on. It's been a while since I did a video, <clears throat> so I've been busy uh, with commissions and just working on some stuff and experimenting with the cork and. Um, just haven't made any videos, sorry about that guys. All right, so there's those two. And um, so we have the beginnings of this. So let's look at this. I'm gonna kind of maybe tone it more towards the actual color of the road, which is kind of a very ochre kind of color, kind of a beige tan color there. Right on top of that gray, it's gonna turn a little green here, but I'm not too worried about that. I'm gonna get a lot of layers with this stuff. All right. The road kind of, kind of this little, the windy little bumpy road, little country dirt road. Just gonna take this ochre. This is a um, now this is a cray pause, and it's just your, just like a beige ochre color. Um, it is looking a little green here as I go over the gray, which is all right. I could have started with this, which would have been fine, but I've kind of just always gone to starting with gray. <laughs> it's kind of just stuck with me. All right, let's flip this here. So I can apply it wide 
using the whole stick here. Kind of getting a wide stroke. But then I can also um, <clears throat> just color it like that too. By doing it this way, I can kind of get into the texture of the cork a little bit easier than by doing it like that. I can kind of use the point of this and kind of push the color into the little crevices, especially this grain that you can really see um, coming through. If I can cover some of that up a little bit better. All right, so that was the Crepaz Expressionist on top of a gray that was a Mungio. And with the cork, the texture of the cork, I'm able to do that. On paper, I'd have some problems with getting that to ha work, but on the cork, it's not a problem. All right, I'm gonna take this, um, actually we're gonna take a brown and I'm gonna come over this is a uh, medium brown. This is a, another Crepaz Expressionist, just a lighter brown than this dark one here. And just kind of soften that edge a little where the road meets the rest of the land with a kind of a neutral brown. And kind of feather that into the road a little. Gonna make little uh, tire rut marks, right? A little, um, you know, like a tractor or old pickup truck or something. Kind of came through and left tire marks, tracks. That'll eventually, what that this will eventually be. I know it doesn't look like that now, but I'm thinking ahead, right? I'm thinking, yeah, I kind of want to do that. You can kind of see it in the picture over here. So just, you know, not too much detail, just kind of an indication of that. I need to bring in some greens and we need to bring in some of that sky color here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this blue and I'm just gonna continue the blue all the way up the whole side over here. And just cover the cork. I just want a nice underneath layer of, of this blue to, to be my base. Here. There's a lot of trees over here, so this will be the base of the underlying color of those trees. Um, maybe a little like that. I know it doesn't look like much now, but I'm building up layers, so this will be that underneath layer where I'm going to put the foliage on top. So with this, I'm just going to use my fingers like this and just kind of quickly rub this around. Okay. I'm going to clean my thumbs again. I do my I do clean my hands quite a bit with this because uh, it is messy and I don't like to transfer colors from my fingers onto a new stick. All right, <clears throat> all right. Let's take this. This is a light gray and this is a. Um, this feels like a Mungio to me, um, so it's a light gray. Could be a neo pastel, but I think it's the Moon Geo. Right? Light gray. But that's gonna be the, my sky over in this corner. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in. And of course, right on the cork, it looks very, um, very bright, which is good. And just rub that around. Kind of 
looking at my reference picture and seeing how far down do I want to go with this. I'm gonna bring it over here. I'm gonna put a tree through this, so keep that in mind too. Okay. And get shaved down on one good side of that stick there. So it does eat up quite a bit of the oil pastel. So be warned of that. You can see I shaved off a good section there. All right. And my hands are clean enough, I think, where we'll just go ahead and go right in. And um, spread that around a little. Try to cover up that cork a little bit better. And we'll just kind of fade it down into the rest of it. Okay. Try to reuse these wipes as much as I can. They're hard to find. When I go to the Walmart, I you know, when they have them, I'll, I'll pick up one or two. Um, when I see them. Okay, so here we'll go over, uh, we'll go over it again. Same gray here, same light gray. Just want to get more color into it. You can see that cork really eats it up. It really uh, absorbs. You're able to get a lot of layers. There's still a lot of texture of the cork coming through. You can see that. All right, let's bring it down here. Use that whole stick. I could take the papers off. It gives you the ability to really use the whole stick, right? And by doing so, you create edges. See, so I create a clean edge here, which can be used to create lines with very easily. Another reason why I take papers off, okay? All right, we're gonna rub that in. Uh, let me use your stump here. Maybe I can yeah, we can. So the stump actually works pretty good on the cork. I'm able to smear that around. I don't have to get my fingers messy. Still a lot of texture. You can still see a lot of that cork tile coming through. Um, I don't know. I just really like that look. I like that kind of pitted broken color, impressionistic feel to it. And a cork just naturally does that for you. But yet it's smooth enough where I can blend it like this easily too. All right, so I'm gonna go a little bit more. Notice I'm putting a lot of the color here. I'm just putting it, this is now the third layer of this here. So don't be afraid if you're trying out cork to really put in a lot of, a lot down. And we'll go in and rub that out. So I know on the video that probably is not all that exciting, <laughs> especially in real time. I figure the people who are really interested in here and this will watch it. Okay. Nice, you can see how it kind of fades, kind of faint here and kind of real heavy there. Okay, let's get some little green, let's get some of this green here. So this is that green gray. I call it a green gray. This is a Mungio uh, stick. I can tell by the size of it for one and just the way it feels. All right, and I'll just lay it here. I think it's called Verona, Verona Green or something like that, Verona Gray. There it is, it's just a very subtle, kind of a green, there's a lot of gray in there. I like it for, uh, to start off, when I start my greens off, I like to start off with this, because it's very subtle and it's easy for me to go over with, and I need to uh, change it up. 
So I'm gonna use this as my green for like my grass. So if you look at the reference picture here, you can see we have a little grassy part here and then we have a lot of green, green trees here. So that's what I'm gonna kind of get in with this stick right here. Um, I'm also gonna get in a bush that I see here. So I'm gonna put a little green down. Just how much of this green, that is the question. All right, and then over here, we have the, um, these trees, these distant kind of trees in the, on the road here. So that's just kind of going to be what that is. All right. Kind of keep a little blue coming over there. Right, and then we have a, let's bring that down a little bit further. I'm kind of looking at my, my picture. I'm kind of seeing the edge of that tree where it hits the sky. I'm kind of just making a judgment there. Okay. I'm just running this green across. All right, now let's take in that little, there's not get another little tree coming up right here. And uh, this one. We're gonna bring up a little bit like that. Remember, I'm I'm tr I'm moving a landscape format to a square, so I'm kind of gotta kind of squeeze it in. So some stuff is gonna be squeezed a little bit. It's okay. It's really about colors and values. All right, it's a little bit of green in there and on there and coming up. The slope of the land, remember that? I was talking about that in the beginning, the way that the slopes kind of come in, kind of like that. All right, let's get a stump here and let's rub that around. Now let's see, I like this one for sky, so I'm gonna leave that alone. It's already got the gray on it. We'll just use this one here. Let's pick a, pick a point and start blending. So if you do a circular blend, you're able to move those colors around easier. I tend to do that when I come to trees. Okay. And that's a nice green. And then mixed in with the blue, it's a nice pretty color there. All right, just kind of go over this. You see already the value of the color, that green, how much lighter it is. And so we're already setting up the values correctly. It's very important to do that at the beginning and kind of keep readjusting your values as you go through to make sure that all the colors that you put down are gonna work with each other. All right, let's go down. So remember that slope down. So I, I'm starting to kind of get that in my head to really kind of move the color in that, in that sense, in that way. All right, and then um, this will be a little part of a feel that we'll bring out here in it later. And then there's that tree, that tree here that kind of comes in on this side of the road. And you see the road will then cut behind it We'll go ahead and rub that in. See, I'm getting this area right here. You see the road here as it goes down and then there's this tree right here where it just blocks our view. That's kind of my idea where I'm starting on this part right there. Okay. All right. Now I'm gonna take a lavender and uh, it's usually going to be one of these three sticks here. This is a Neo Pastel Ultramarine Blue. I call it lavender or light lavender. This is another Neo Pastel. Same color, different value. I like to have different values of the Ultramarine 
blue. So let's take, let's start with the lighter one. Kind of get in at the base. Now it's going to come in really light. Might be a little too light. So let's go with the darker version of it. And that's a little bit what I was getting after. I want that kind of a little bit more blue in it. And that's what this color will do. Okay, I'm going to go over the top of that green with it. And a little bit back in here. And I like the ultramarine lavender in autumn scenes quite a bit because the colors of autumn against this color here is is what's really attractive. Um, is those color combinations, this kind of ultramarine or lavender, whatever you want to call it, um, with the autumn colors is is really appealing. Okay, so you see I'm just kind of striking that in a couple places and get it up in here. And then we're going to rub this out and come down a little bit. Maybe even over here too. Just a little bit of that. All right, so there's that color there. And let's take a stump and just kind of rub that in. And what we're pretending to make here is some distant, really far off distant trees that are kind of in that mist, in that fog in the background there. In the picture here, you can very see some faint tree trunks, some trees there. <clears throat> and so I'm kind of pretending that that is going to be this section right here. this um, here and we'll kind of push it up into the green kind of cover this little area kind of fade it out with that with that blue all right we'll slowly build up this image I think I'm going to bring a little bit more of that, this lavender here. And we're just going to go again with it. Put another layer down and maybe try to even indicate an actual shape of a distant tree with its trunks, you know? So you notice how I'm just kind of making these little lines. I'm just using the side of the stick. And I just kind of lay it in and kind of feather it. Kind of feather out a little bit. Um, over here, I see a tree kind of doing something right there. Might use a darker gray for that. And uh, maybe I'll use this dark gray that I started off with. Let's see if I can get a trunk right there. Okay, so I'm working on the back part of the image, kind of the very furthest part that we can see with our eyes. Okay. You can see stuff in there, but that fog um, is pretty heavy, so it definitely fades out, fades away. Feels like fall, you know? Feels like, ooh, yeah, the cold weather has arrived. The frosty mornings are back, right? bring in that um, gray back in. I'm going to kind of bring in some of this gray to kind of bring down into this area, kind of in between some of these tree trunks. So they just, they just come out a little bit more noticeable, right?
Uh, just kind of poking at that background there. And uh, see if I can get a little bit more coverage on the pitted part of the cork. You can see that there's like these little pivot holes. Um, so see if I can just use the edge of this tip of this gray here to see if I can kind of push it in there a little bit better. All right, now we're gonna add a lot more here, but we're kind of, looks pretty good. So let's take a stump here and go over some of these and kind of change the values slightly Fade them out a little bit. When you use oil pastel, every time you go over either with your finger or a stump like this and you go over that color, it changes the color. It blends it so it's not so strong. Um, so you can kind of go over your marks using a stump like this and kind of kind of fine tune the value of that color that you just put. So it kind of fits in a little bit uh, better with the surrounding colors. All right, so imagine those are distant fall trees, okay? You can kind of see that, right? Kind of starting to happen. All right, get some of that blue in there. All right, let's take a look at the picture now. All right, so I was looking, you know, I was working back in this section here. That's my painting and that's the uh, photo. See quite a bit different as far as the colors go, but I don't know, it's gonna work out. When we're all done, this will all work out. Now I'm gonna get in uh, a green, a little bit brighter green here. I can see a distant field right here. Kind of a brighter green and some right there. So let's get a different green than this one. And so, which green is it going to be? Here's one. I want to go brighter than that. Um, it might be this one. More this one. This is a really bright. Let's just see what this one looks like. This is a uh, Van Gogh. And it's a very light green there, um, see the color of it there. Right, and there's a field right there, oh, that's really bright. Yeah, that's really bright. So we're not gonna put too much of that down, just a little bit right like that. It's so bright compared to the other colors that doesn't really work. I just want to see if that would work. So let's switch that up to a different green. This is a Neo Pastel. This is that one here. It's a lot more color, but it's a different shade of green. I think it's a little closer to the picture actually. So there's that field back here. It comes right up to the edge of the road. So if my road comes down here, it comes right up to the edge here. Okay. I'll just rub that in. Notice the value of that green changes when I take the stump over it. So I'm pushing it into the cork. There's already color on the tip here, so that definitely mixed in. But it got to the green that I was wanting, so it's not so bright. It's now faded back. So I'm going for this little section of green patch that you see right in there, right there. Okay. Let's put some more of that in there and then we'll rub it again with the stump. And honestly, guys, those of you, you guys are um, asking me about cork and my experience, you just need to really just try it out. I really recommend that you just try it out. If you can get this stuff, the Robinson, Portugal, whatever that you can get that, that's what I'm using here. Um, where one side of the cork is laminated, 
like the finished part. I think they're wall tiles, maybe they're floor tiles. But the other side is bare cork. That's what I'm using here. I really recommend you just have to try it out to understand how it feels because just watching the video isn't going to really do the justice because what I'm feeling here with my, um, the way I'm applying the color is just really pleasant surface to work on. The way I can just blend the color out into it like that is so easy, but yet the texture of it is so appealing. Okay, there's that field back in there. Now we have another patch of grass right here, but that's gonna be a different green than this one. That's gonna be a little bit stronger green. So let's see these two. So there's the one I have on there and here's a different one. Nope, I need a different color. Let's go a little stronger. Maybe um, this Sakura Crepaz. This is a expressionist. You can see that green compared to the, to the one I applied. That's gonna go right here. There's a patch of grass right here. On this side of the road. All right, stump. All right, I darkened that up a little bit. That's fine. We just have a different value of greens here next to each other. We have a green that looks a little further away, which is lighter green. All right, and then we have a green that's a little bit stronger, which is actually a closer to us. So that's why I'm using these two different ones here. Okay. And then there's gonna be a little road there. It goes right between them. All right, so let's get that road. I'm gonna use a um, one of these grays here. So these are both Neo Pastels. And they're kind of these beige gray colors, kind of khaki beige colors. And there's a darker version and then a lighter version of the same color. I had kind of both. I see I have different values of the same color is helpful. Let's start off with the darker one and just kind of put that road back in there. That little country road. Kind of trying to make it look like an old bumpy road or something, you know? Trying to change that elevation. Um, kind of does that. So this is that kind of a grayish um, beige here. This is a Neo Pastel. That road kind of continues back and then it just disappears. We can't see it past that. And then it gets brighter down here. Oh, that's my dog. So I'm gonna need to stop my video and I gotta go see what she's doing. Someone's at my door, I think. So let me um, pause this, I'll be back guys.